Right. Well, hello, my name is Sherwin. I'm the pastor of Lake and Bethel, and I'm on study leave this week. Was going to go out of state, but decided to stay here so I could get some more things done. And uh, making this video today on a farm near Montague. In front of me is Lake Michigan, and behind me is a herd of striped Galloway cows, a very rare breed. Some people call them Oreo cattle. There's less than 2,000 of them in the United States. As I've ridden past this place, I've always thought it'd be kind of fun to shoot a video with cows like this in the background. Uh, unique cows for a unique church. And so that's why we're here. Now, you know, I've mentioned once or twice before that I grew up on a farm in Iowa. And one of the things that we did in, in Iowa was have tractor pulls. And what that is, a contest, to see which tractor can get the furthest. And you weigh the tractor down kind of progressively until it can't pull anymore. Now my dad wouldn't do that because he said it was too hard on the tractor. And it definitely was. There's a spiritual equivalent to a tractor pull. See, the devil tries to weigh us down get us to that point of giving up and stopping. He sends demons to weigh us down to the breaking point, just like they try to wear, weigh those tractors down to where they can't pull anymore. The devil wants to weigh you down and break you, to get you chasing things that aren't good for you, to keep you busy, busy, busy. And we don't mind being busy because we all want more stuff. We want to be perfect parents in the worst way and so we stress ourselves out for that or we want to climb the ladder at work so we stress out and there's just too many things to do my colleague rick warren says this he says god gives you exactly as much time as you need to do the things that he wants you to do the rest that we do is just for our own ego and you will burn out doing that that is the satanic goal the devil knows the easiest way to immobilize your soul is through self-pity. To get you to feel sorry for yourself because you don't have enough time. To get you to feel sorry for yourself because you're too busy. Fortunately for us, Jesus has an antidote. Today we're going to look at one of his simple teachings. Now I need to look at these verses at least once a month. Just sometimes, even though I'm old and highly experienced, I still think I need to prove myself as a pastor. Or I want to be a super pastor. Now, if you ever feel overwhelmed, if you ever feel stressed out, this passage is for you. They're the words of Jesus recorded for us in Matthew chapter 11. And they read like this. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. It's really interesting to read that verse and then look up and see Lake Michigan in the background. But what Jesus is saying here is, in all your busyness, or it's a question I have to ask myself anyway, in all my busyness, do I go to him and ask him what he wants me to do? Jesus is specific about this. If you're carrying heavy burdens, if you're weary, if you can't get it done, can't sleep because you can't shut your mind off, if you need sedatives to help you relax, he says, come to me and I will give you rest. Uh, that's the opposite of what the devil says. The devil says, do more and more and more. And then he sends a demon to whisper in your ear and tell you that you can't get it done. And then he sends another one to tell you that it isn't fair. And then the whole self-pity spiral begins and happens. Jesus continues in this passage. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. Now, whenever I teach from this passage where it says, take my yoke upon you, I have to define what a yoke is. 
In this slide, you see an egg yolk. That's not what he's talking about here. And then there's horse yolks. This picture here is of the Amish people and one of the yolks, the yolks that they put on their horses. And this next slide is a human yolk. Now there's an unproven tradition that Jesus, before he started his ministry as the great teaching rabbi, that he worked in a carpenter shop and that he built yokes for oxen and for horses out of wood. Jesus was the yoke maker. And here he says, let me teach you. Take my yoke upon you because it'll be light and it'll be easy and it'll be well fitting. He says, let me teach you. Let me show you how to do this because I'm gentle and you'll find rest for your souls. See, the devil wants to destroy your soul. The devil wants to irritate your soul. The devil wants to keep you in a state of frenzy. And Jesus wants to give your soul rest and peace. Jesus continues, For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So, what burden does Jesus give you? Well, none. Many people, you know, struggle with securing their salvation. Am I good enough? Or am I going to burn in hell forever? Jesus takes care of that for us. People struggle with the merit system, trying to build up enough good deeds to make up for all their bad deeds. They follow all the rules, all the trying to be good enough. That's gone, folks. Jesus simply says, trust me to save you, because he's taken care of all of the things that are wrong in our lives. His system is not the merit system. It's the mercy system. But we still like to control things, don't we? We like to be in control of our health. We like to be in control of our work. We like to be in control of our families. But Jesus says, come to him. Jesus looks right at you and says, come to me because I've got it under control. Your job is just to represent him, to do what you can and not worry about it. I like riding around here in Montague because there's cornfields. kind of reminds me of home. I think about farmers growing crops and how that's all done. Now, farmers cannot control the weather. It's about 65 degrees and sunny today. I'm doing this on a Wednesday. But it could just as well be having a downpour right now, and there's not a thing I could do about it, nor is there a thing any of the farmers could do about it. We cannot control the weather. So we do what we can. The farmer has a choice of planting, of doing weed and insect control, but they have to let the Lord do the rest. And I think Rick Warren's right. He gives you exactly enough time to do what he wants you to do. If you don't have enough time, you're doing something he doesn't want you to do. Blows the mind, doesn't it? So I have three takeaways for today. First one, if you're stressed out and tired, turn to Jesus. Reach out to him in prayer because he's there and he'll send a messenger, an angel, to tell you what to do. Angels are his messenger service like sending a text, the answer will appear, and he will give you rest. Martin Luther, the great German reformer of 500 years ago, had an interesting thing about prayer. This little quote is from one of his biographers. It says, Martin Luther's mighty prayer life is legendary. He's supposed to have said his famous statement, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. That is not advice that regularly crops up in the professional growth or personal success genres. Now, folks, I must, I must confess that I don't turn to him often enough. And while I was writing this, I had to ask him to forgive me for neglecting prayer and help me form better prayer habits. He says, if you're burning out and stressed, come to me. I'll give you rest. I need to trust him to do that. If I'm stressed out and tired, I need to turn to him. 
second take home point is that is to take on the yoke of Jesus. That means to set aside the devil's torturous yoke and put on Jesus' easy yoke. Go to him in prayer and ask him what he wants you to do with your life. Break it down into hours if you want. What do you want me to do this hour, this hour, etc.? Imagine the change that would bring. I mean, think about right now as you're watching this, it's Sunday morning. What if the first thing you do on Sunday morning is pray, Lord, what do you want me to do this fine Sunday morning? Can you imagine if folks prayed that prayer every Sunday morning, what that would do to church attendance? Churches would be full and people would be happier. Now, since about the first of the year, I've been talking about reporting for duty. And I put a little write-up on that in the upcoming calendar that will be coming out real soon. But, you know, it came out about the time people were making New Year's resolutions. I wonder what would happen if we got on our knees and said, Lord, what do you want me to do this year? Because if we do that, it will change, your li it will change our lives. And he will teach you. And you will find rest for your soul. So take his yoke on. And then the third takeaway is this. Remember his burden is light. Not like the devil's, not like the devil's big old burden of guilt. Just take that burden of guilt, that yoke of the devil, and set it down because you are forgiven. The merit system is a burden. The mercy system is very light. The old covenant is a heavy weight. The new covenant is very freeing. The devil wants to wear you down. Jesus wants to lift you up. So which way is better? You know, some people are so busy because they're trying to please other critical people. Could be demanding kids, demanding parents, a demanding spouse, demanding co-worker. What do you suppose the will of Jesus is with that? To take their yoke upon you? No. Let it go. They're just using you anyway and manipulating you with guilt. Jesus' way is better. Remember, his burden is light. One pastor I know had a secretary who was very critical of him. She didn't like anything about this guy. She didn't like how he kept his schedule. She didn't like his sermon content. She even made nasty remarks about his personal life. She was making him miserable. I asked him one day why he wanted to please her instead of pleasing the Lord. He didn't have an answer. So I said to him, as someone much his senior, I said, stop trying to please the secretary and tell her that you're going to stop trying to please her. Tell her that you're not going to try to live up to her standards anymore. Well, he did. He told her that. She quit. And he is still rejoicing. Sometimes we just got to walk away from certain folks who would try to control us. As this picture tells us, the devil sends people to discourage us. We need to say no to them and yes to Jesus because his load is light. Now, folks, the best way to lighten your load is to drop to your knees. When I do this, life is good. When I don't do this, I'm miserable and stressed out. I need to do this, and so do you. So let's do it. Pray with me, please. Lord, we all strap on the wrong yoke from time to time, try to please things other than you. Remind us that that heavy yoke that we carry around is not from you, that we can set it down anytime we want and take your yoke upon us. And we thank you for giving us that privilege. Amen. Well, folks, thanks for tuning in.
from Montague, Michigan. And I will see you again next Sunday.